Welcome back to Adobe Animate Basics. In the last video, I introduced symbols and we looked at two ways to create them. If you haven't already, I recommend watching that one first because this video picks up where we left off. I'll leave a link in the description below and also top right on screen. With that said, today we're going to dive deeper into instances and the relationship between the main timeline and the timeline inside symbols. We'll also learn how to use the frame picker which is a tool designed specifically for symbols. To start off, let's add a simple blink animation to this dog symbol we created in the last video. Double click on any instance of the dog symbol to open it, and you'll see in the navigation bar that we are now inside the dog symbol. Remember that the stage and timeline inside symbols are separate from the main stage and main timeline. So if I extend this timeline to 10 frames, and then exit the symbol by clicking on scene one in the navigation bar, you can see that the main timeline has not changed. Going back inside the dog symbol, let's first sort out the layers. We want to animate the eyes, so we should put that on its own layer. With the selection tool, hold shift and click on each part of the eye until all of it is selected. Right click on the selection and select cut then making sure that the eyes layer is selected, right click on the stage and select paste in place. Paste in place will drop the eyes in its original position. I'm going to quickly create the blink animation on the timeline. If you're not familiar with animating in Adobe Animate, pause this video and watch part two, which covers frame by frame animation. And I also do a blink animation in that video. I'll leave a link in the description and top right. All right, now we've got frame one, open eyes. Frame three, they're starting to close. Frame five, it's the blink. Frame seven, starting to open. And frame nine, back to open eyes. That's going to be our simple blink animation. Let's see it in action. This is what it looks like. Now let's take our first look at how the timeline inside the symbol interacts with the main timeline. Let's go back to the main timeline by exiting the symbol. And you can see that at the moment, the main timeline is only one frame long. So even though there is animation inside the dog symbol, nothing happens when I press play. If I extend the main timeline and make it 50 frames long and then press play again, you can see that the blink animation now plays over and over again. This is because the default behavior for symbols is to play whatever's inside it in a loop. And we can see this by selecting the symbol and looking in the properties panel. This row of icons controls the symbol's playback. If I hover over the currently selected icon, you can see that it says play graphic in loop. And that's what the symbol is doing right now by default. The second icon says play graphic once. If I select that and then press play, you can see that the blink animation now only plays once, even though the timeline is still 50 frames long. The third icon tells the symbol to play a single frame, and that means that it simply won't animate when I press play. And these last two icons tell the symbol to play in reverse once, or play in reverse on a loop. Next, let's talk about this number that you can see below the icons, which tells the symbol which frame it should play first. It's important to understand that the frame number shown here refers to the timeline inside the symbol, not the timeline we're currently seeing. For the sake of clarity, I'm going to select play single frame for this example. Now, if I change the first frame to five, you can see that the symbol now shows closed eyes. And going inside the symbol, will confirm that the closed eyes are indeed on frame five of the symbol's timeline. And if I want it to show, for example, this drawing on frame seven instead, I can exit the symbol and change first frame to seven. There we go. At the moment, there's no animation because play single frame is selected, but this also applies to all the other playback options. If I select play graphic once, you can see that the first frame is still frame seven. It starts at frame seven and then it plays through, then stops. Moving on, we learned in the last video that if you make changes to a symbol, all instances of the symbol will be affected. However, if I zoom out over here, 
you notice that the other instances of dog are behaving differently to the one we've just changed. These guys are playing in a loop, which is the default symbol behavior, whereas our guy is doing that thing where he starts at frame 7 and then plays once. The important thing to keep in mind here is that to actually make changes to a symbol, you've got to open the symbol and go inside it. That's where the drawings and frames of animation are stored, inside the symbol. When we exit the symbol and on the main timeline tell it to, for example, play single frame, we're only telling this specific instance of the dog symbol to play single frame. We're not changing what's inside the dog symbol. This means that we can tell each instance of the dog symbol to behave differently. For example, I can tell this instance to play once, starting from frame 3. And I can set this one to reverse loop, starting from frame 5 and so on. This guy can loop starting from frame 7. If I press play now, we can see all these different instances of the same symbol playing the blink animation in different ways. Keep in mind that creating a new keyframe also creates a new instance of the symbol. Let's hide everything and create a new layer. One dog. Opening the library I'm going to drag an instance of dog onto the stage. Let's say I want dog to stare blankly at the camera for a little while and then blink once. Right now it's doing the default symbol behavior of playing in the loop. So let's change that. Let's start by setting this instance of dog to play single frame. And we want him to blink somewhere near the end. So let's create a new keyframe towards the end of the timeline. This instance of dog on this new keyframe is a new and separate instance of the dog symbol, so we can tell it to behave differently. I'm going to tell it to play graphic once, starting from frame 3, because that's when the blink starts. Pressing play now, we can see that dog stares at the camera for a little while before blinking once, which is exactly what we wanted him to do. Now there's only one more thing I want to talk about before ending this video. But this one is going to make things a lot easier for you. We've just learned how to control a symbol with basic animation inside it, but in the real world, most animations will have way more than 10 frames. And it's not very practical to be constantly jumping in and out of symbols, trying to remember frame numbers, and that's where the frame picker comes in. With any instance selected, you can find the frame picker right here in the properties panel, or also in this toolbar on the right. The frame picker is a visual way to do everything we learned in this video. If you click on this drop down menu, you can tell the symbol to loop, play once, play single frame, reverse play once or reverse loop. And these options are exactly the same as the icons we used earlier in the video. You can also see all the frames inside the symbol along with its frame number beneath it, which is super convenient when you're animating especially and clicking on any of these frames will set it as the first frame. So if, for example, I select frame 6 here and then close the frame picker, you can see that the first frame shown in the properties panel is now frame 6. You'll also notice that Adobe Animate has automatically added a new keyframe on the timeline under our playhead. This is because create keyframe is turned on in the frame picker. Now, unless I'm doing something like lip sync, I find create keyframe really annoying, so I like to keep it turned off. I also think that we don't usually need to see every single frame, which is why I like to click on this drop down menu and change show all frames to just show keyframes. And with that selected, the frame picker will now only show keyframes that we created for the blink animation. Alright, I think I'm gonna end this video here. I know it's quite long and there's a lot of content in this video, but I didn't want to split any of this up because everything we touched on today is very closely related. Hopefully, you now understand how to control how a symbol plays back on the timeline, the difference between editing a symbol versus editing an instance of the symbol, and also how the frame picker works. Let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful or if you just have a question and I'll try to answer every question. I think I usually get around to them.
And if you want to keep learning, check out my videos on motion tweens and classic tweens, which builds on what we've learned about symbols and everything else in the Adobe Animate Basics series. And as always, you know, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Maybe you should like and subscribe.